Crypto DLT with Mr. Connector. Be sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell for daily content. Let's go. Hey guys, it's Mr. Connector again. Hope you're doing great. Today is Thursday, March 7th, 2024. Let's get straight into it and check out the connector coins. Let's see what's doing good over the past 24 hours. Akash, Near Protocol, Zahal, Ion. If you guys remember yesterday, we called Zahal and EWT, Energy Web, as our deep reds yesterday. And yes, they're up 12% on EWT and 23% on Zahal. Let's see what's down over the past seven days. Strongholds had a little pull back after that great run up. Storex and Flare is down a little bit over the last seven days. Let's look at the 30. There's Storex down 20%. And let's take a quick look at the yearly reds. Corium's down 76% over the last year. If you're looking to pick something up, that might be a good one. Let's quickly check out the commodities, precious metals. Gold's at 2,156. Silver's $24 and 24 cents. And it looks like orange juice is the top gainer for the commodity sector. Straight into the crypto bubbles, we see that renders up 25% over the 24 hour period. What else is doing good? Adam's doing good. H bar is okay. Flow, Algo's up 15%. AGIX 28%, Near Protocol 25%, Akash and Fetch AI. Over the past year, what sticks out to me is the Bit Sensor, Tau, Solana, Render, Injective, Akash, and Caspa as the top gainers for the year. We got some good news for you today. Lots of things to go over. We just want to take a quick look at the markets on the ledgers. We've got the XRP ledger pulled up. We've got Corium, Solo, and Fury coming in as the top volume there. Stellar is the same with USDC, Stronghold, YXLM. The Hedera volumes are USDC, Saucer Swap, and H Suite is doing really good lately. On Cosmos, we've got Fetch AI, Akash, and Ryzon doing the best. And on our Metal X trading, we want to take a quick look at Proton. These are the 12-hour candles. And this thing just looks like it's ready to keep going. Let's see. And I want to touch on the ETH gate a little bit. We've got Eleanor Terrett posting. New CFTC chairman testified in front of the House Ag GOP that his agency is working closely with Gary Gensler and the SEC on classification of ETH as a possible security at Permethium, as Permethium plans to custody ETH on its platform. Benham says the decision by the SEC to validate Permethium's claims that ETH is a security will put FTC registrants that list ETH out of compliance. So I believe he's referring to the futures markets that are already running on the CFTC. They're going to have to either delist those Ethereum CFTC futures, possibly. Sounds like they're backtracking, guys. They tried to get E through the door with a quasi-free pass, and now they're having to backtrack. And we've got XRP drops. Yesterday on Bloomberg, SEC's Gensler was asked again if ETH is a security. His response, but we do have filings in front of us. I'm not going to comment. Imagine that. I know you guys can barely stand to watch him, but let's try to Staying get through this. The SEC's see what he says. Lines, despite uh, uh, conversations that you're having today around climate risk, you also, I'm sure, uh, as a five-member commission and as the staff are going to be considering in recent months, because you are uh, facing a deadline coming up in May around a spot Ethereum ETF. It is, having approved, it is Kaylee. You had to. I get do your have to ask question this in. question. Of course, we are now about two months into a world in which spot Bitcoin products exist. They have had incredible uh, demand, more than $8 billion in inflows. Now the optimism is Ether spot ETFs are next. Do you not first have to settle the question as to whether Ether is a security or a commodity? Can you answer that first? Well, Kaylee, again, uh, on any one of these crypto tokens, it's about the facts and circumstances as to 
whether the investing public is anticipating a profit based on the efforts of others. Um, but we do have filings in front of us. I'm not going to comment. I will say this. This is a highly speculative asset class. One could just Yes, we know, Gary. We know it's highly speculative because all the big players can't get in yet. It's going to be a little volatile until the market has these huge inflows, Gary. We all know you're trying to protect the bankers. Just look at the volatility of Bitcoin in the last few days. And look, I grew up loving roller coasters. Uh, maybe in my adult years, I don't ride them as much. But you, you really should be conscious as the investing public that this is a bit of a roller coaster ride on these volatile uh, assets. It's called FUD, folks. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And then the question is, is how, how firm is the foundation? Of the, you know, you get to the top of that hill, how's the foundation underneath it? And are there cash flows or what's the use case? Yeah, I mean, he's got a point there. There's a lot of junk cryptos out there, but we know what utility is. We know which ones are going to be good. For thousands of these tokens, there's about 15 or 20,000 of them. They also may be securities because the investing public is relying on the efforts of some group of entrepreneurs in the middle of these projects. And would you consider Ether as part of that group that may be securities? I understand you're asking the question, but again, I'm going to okay. defer on that question. Imagine that, Gary Gensler deferring a question. You know, we pay him to give us clarity, and he's not doing his job. That's it. Plain and simple. And we've got digital perspectives. And I would like to add, why is the SEC and Gary Gensler awarding Prometheum a broker-dealer license when it has been made clear by Congress that Prometheum is tied to the big Asian country with a red flag? For our children's future, American patriots want to know. And he retweeted Matt Walsh. If the SEC wants to use Prometheum as a puppet to say ETH is a security, they may want to think about leading the company's next financing round. That's some serious thin ice. It's just going through Prometheum's numbers. They've only got 920000 in cash. It looks a little over $1 million in total assets. So they're going to need major funding to get that going. And we've got Crypto Banker, Real World Assets on Stellar Org. Stellar has already been collaborating with industry-leading financial institutions for several years to bring real-world assets on-chain, and recently Protocol 20 to bring Sorbonne's smart contract functionality to the network. That's the next thing, folks. Tokenization, real-world assets. If you didn't see the video on Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, talk about real-world asset tokenization, I'm going to play that right quick. We all need to see this one important to be anticipating the next move. I, we believe the next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets. And that means every stock, every bond will have its own basically QCIP. It'll be on one general ledger. Every investor, you and I, will have our own number, our own identification. We could rid ourselves of all issues around illicit activities about bonds and stocks and digital by having a, 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 a tokenization. But the most important thing, we could customize strategies through tokenization that is, if it's every individual. We would have instantaneous settlement. Think about all the costs of settling bonds and stocks. Mm. But if you had a tokenization, everything would be immediate mm. because it's just a line item. And so we believe this is a technological transformation for financial assets. I believe if, if you want to talk about like voting and voting choice and all the things, if we know every moment who is the owner of that stock and it's now time to vote, every individual who has ownership is identified and they can vote their own share. It's almost like these spot Bitcoin ETFs are a distraction. And the real story is the rebuilding of the entire financial system using the tokenization of real world assets. He's letting you know right there. And while we're on RWAs, here's an article from Coindesk. And it's actually sponsored by Stellar Development Foundation. It's good to see Stellar finally spending a little money out there on advertising. They've been uh, kind of holding back this whole time and building up that war chest. 
Tokenization, real-world assets, real-world benefits. As blockchain technology continues to disrupt the traditional financial market, tokenization stands as the single greatest opportunity to replace the archaic systems we have in place today. At its most basic level, tokenization is the process of bringing real-world assets, both tangible and intangible, on-chain. However, the impact that tokenization has on financial markets is far more reaching than just things on chain goes through the talk about how they've got protocol 20 with smart contracts now and how different institutions are using this and how it provides a benefit to individuals who interact with real world assets for institutions tokenization is an opportunity to drive cost savings and maximize efficiency goes through and lays out all the benefits of using stellar for this And in conclusion, tokenizing assets on Stellar is user-friendly and efficient. With the ability to issue any asset in only four steps without a smart contract needed. Now, with the launch of smart contracts on Stellar, the use of asset tokenization will continue to expand further into everyday financial products like lending, borrowing, saving, and automatic yield calculations. So tokenizing a real-world asset doesn't need smart contracts. It's just like a NFT. Imagine an entire cryptocurrency network, but with only one supply, one coin on the entire blockchain. That's what an NFT is. There's only one of them. So each one's like its separate system. But now with Stellar, they can use these NFTs or real world assets in so many different ways. The tokenization of real world assets will undoubtedly be one of the biggest innovations the modern financial industry has ever experienced. As both individuals and institutions are beginning to discover the opportunities presented by tokenization, Stellar continues to break down barriers to entry and support the next generation of finance. And guys, remember yesterday we were talking about how they queried a thousand banks and ask them were they ready to implement digital payments and only 47% are ready. Here's one from FX Hedge. A real estate CEO predicts hundreds of banks will fail or be taken over by 2026. A real estate boss expects at least 500 banks to fail or be taken over in the next two years. Scott Retchler, CEO of RXR, said the maturing of commercial real estate loans would hit smaller lenders. Commercial real estate has been hit by declining asset prices, costlier borrowing, and tighter lending. Hundreds of American banks will collapse or be taken over by 2026, a top real estate executive predicted. I think there's going to be 500 or more fewer banks in the U.S. over the next two years, RXR CEO Scott Retzler said in a white paper seen by Fortune ahead of publication. I'm not saying they're all going to fail, but they're going to be forced into consolidation if they don't fail. The U.S. has about 4,000 banks per the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, meaning the loss of 500 would represent about a 12% decline. And on that topic, they're getting less help from the Federal Reserve. Look at this press release from last month from the Fed. Federal Reserve Board announces the Bank Term Funding Program will cease making new loans as scheduled on March 11th. If you're asking what the bank term funding program is, it's an emergency lending program created by the Federal Reserve in March 2023 to provide emergency liquidity to U.S. depository institutions. It was established in response to the sudden bank failures of Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank, which were the largest such collapses since the 2008 financial crisis. And that makes me think of Ripple's loan program. Ripple's all about liquidity. Where's all the liquidity going to come from? How would these banks survive in the new world? We shall see. And I wanted to touch on the crypto candidates. From BlockWorks, crypto pack led candidates sweep in the U.S. election primaries. Congressional hopefuls from Texas, California, North Carolina, Alabama, Indiana, and West Virginia seem to be benefiting from last-minute donations from crypto super PACs. These congressional hopefuls accepted 11th-hour help from crypto-geared super trio pack 
protect progress, fair shake, and defend American jobs, and many of them appear to be winning. In what appears to be a successful use of funds, Fair Shake doled out more than $10 million in recent weeks on advertisements and airtime against Representative Katie Porter in California's open primary for U.S. Senate seat, according to FEC filings. You're starting to see the rollout of the big topic in the next election. It's crypto, guys. There are so many people running for office that are on the side of freedom that want this country changed. Uh, that's not just left or right. We want to look at the whole picture. We've got these awesome crypto packs donating towards this. We've got John Deaton running against Elizabeth Warren in Massachusetts or U.S. Senator. He's the crypto lawyer. He's the one that represented all the XRP holders in the Ripple case. And one more for you from you today. This XRP metric surges to $10 billion and can affect price greatly. Which metric are they talking about? One crucial metric for Ripple's XRP has recently seen a substantial surge reaching the $10 billion mark. This uptick in real volume metric, which indicates the actual amount of trading activity, underscores the renewed interest in XRP among traders and could have a pronounced effect on its price. That's what we'd like to hear, guys. We've got great trading volume coming in on XRP. Look, XRP even has a liquid index on NASDAQ. Where will the liquidity flow? When will the regulations finally come out? We are waiting on real world utility. You guys drop a comment below if you have anything to add. Like and subscribe if you could. And we're going to see you on the next one. Mr. Connector out.